Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Teacher Appreciation Week. We are so glad that you could join us here today for Pear Deck for Remote Teaching, presented by the Technology Training Team. Today, we will be using um, our webinar tool. It is called WebEx. Throughout today's session, if you want to turn off your video camera, video camera is not required, make sure that video camera is turned off red. Just go ahead and select that icon. We, will, we do encourage that your microphone stays off throughout today's session. Um, if to make sure your microphone is off, find that microphone icon on your screen and make sure that microphone is turned on red. We will be utilizing the chat window today throughout the entire session. So if you have questions regarding anything that we are showing you here on Pear Deck, um, please feel free to add that into chat to open up the chat window, select that chat bubble icon, enter in your message to everyone and then press enter. And I have several team members here today that are happy to answer all your Pear Deck questions. At any time, if you need to leave today's session, find the red X on the WebEx toolbar and you can exit the session. And note this session is being recorded. We will be posting a recording on the remote teaching website um, later this week. And again, thank you so much for joining us for Pear Deck for Remote Teaching. For all remote teaching resources, please visit our remote teaching website at bit.ly slash pgcps remote teaching. This session and other resources can be found there. I am your host today. My name is Clarissa. I am joined here with my other T3 members, Chris, Kimberlyn, Marianne, who we will be hearing from later um, in this session, and Ashana. So we're gonna get started using Pear Deck um, to kind of get a feel of what Pear Deck looks like. And we're gonna be adding a link in the chat. Um, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through how you're gonna do this and kind of stay active within the webinar screen. So what I'm going to ask you to do is what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna go up to my browser and I'm gonna open up a new tab. And I'm gonna drag this tab out so that I make a new window. And I'm just gonna make that smaller over here so that you can see both windows at one time because I am gonna be demonstrating both sides of that screen here. So I'm just gonna make them even so you can see that. So you can click the link in chat or you can go to joinpd.com and you're gonna enter in this code here, J-O-S-R-H. I'm going to demonstrate that on this side, joinpd.com. And it will take you here to this join page as it is loading, where you will enter in that code, J-O-F-R-H. So you'll see now it's showing me on my teacher and on my presenter screen that I have 28 students already connected and it's growing by the minute. And then you'll say how you're feeling. So I am super happy today is Wednesday. Um, and I know we have an announcement coming on soon from our governor. So we'll find out maybe a little bit more about our distance learning journey here. So on my student screen, you'll notice it is on the screen page, the same one I have on. Um, and I'm on slide seven of 52 here. Um, so you should be seeing a screen like this. Um, if you are having difficulties with this, you're welcome to follow along um, just within WebEx itself. Do not feel that you have to um, participate in the student view because I will be modeling both sides. So we're gonna again post that link through chat on the join link. You can just click that link and it will take you into um, a new window to join the session automatically. And this experience works best in Chrome. So right now I am using a Chrome browser. So with Pear Deck, when you're using this tool, it is best that 
Um, it works best when you use the same browser. So right now I'm using Chrome. So if you are in Chrome, this um, experience will work, work a lot smoother for you. So be mindful um, and letting your students know that if you're using PowerPoint and Microsoft Edge, that um, same tool will apply. You'd want your students to be using Microsoft Edge um, with PowerPoint. So if the link does not work for you, you can go to joinpd.com and then enter in this code J-O-F-R-H. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. And one thing to note out is as I X out of here in the teacher side, and I'm going to continue, the code stays on the teacher screen up at the top right-hand side. So if you're not here with us yet, we are gonna have it in chat but that code is gonna stay on the top um, right-hand side, J-O-F-R-H, and you'll go to joinpd.com and enter in that code. So feel free to take your time as we continue on. So you'll notice my two screens are changing um, as we're going on. So this is a um, teacher controlled screen. There is teacher controlled, um, but this is that teacher controlled screen. So you'll be able to follow along with us. Um, so things we're gonna get started on. So there are gonna be two parts of this session. In this first session, we're gonna look at what is Pear Deck. Um, we're gonna try it out as we're doing right now on the student side. And then we're gonna learn more about the teacher tools before we dive into the templates and actually how to get started using this add-on. So what is Pear Deck's mission? So Pear Deck's mission here is to help teachers deliver powerful learning moments each day. And we're gonna kind of ask you a question, what, what is Pear Deck? How much do you know? And this is a choice question. So on your teacher screen, you are given the choice. So I, I have a shortened screen down here, so it might look a little bit different. Yours is most likely over here on the right. Um, and you can answer that question. How much do you know about Pear Deck? And you'll simply just go ahead and select your answer choice. So I know nothing about it. I've seen it a lot. I love it. It's amazing. And then on the teacher end, I'm actually going to go ahead and show those responses to everyone. So let's see, many of you don't know anything about it. Some of you are getting started and tried it out and others of you love it. That's fantastic. And I know you will love it by the time you leave here today. So Pear Deck allows you to use um, a Google Slide in an interactive way. So if you're a Google Slide user, this is what is called an add-on. So what Pear Deck does is it makes your Google Slide interactive. It allows you to ask these questions. So what you're actually in right now is our Google Slide presentation, and we've added all of these links in there. And there is one bonus side um, that we've added on this slide. If you notice, it says audio included. So on this teacher screen, this is brand new. This just came out. It is amazing. Um, down here at the bottom, you notice you have a headphone icon. As a teacher, you can add in audio. So adding in instructions or reading the slide, to the Pear Deck itself. It is new and it is awesome and easy to use and we will show you how to do that later on. Um, so that, that audio is included. I'm just gonna show you really quick. If you select those headphones, it will play the instructions or whatever you've recorded on that slide. Um, so really easy to kind of navigate that there. We're gonna continue on here. And what I'm gonna point out is this immersive reader. So if you're looking for tools for accessibility for your students and you want your pages read out loud or you want text highlighted or a little bit bigger, you actually have down at the bottom here this little book with a um, uh, sound volume on it. And if you select that, it's gonna take you to this immersive reader page where you can actually get that accessibility features. You'll see here it changes the font. Um, and if I drag it out a little bit, um, you have a menu with settings. So you can change the text size, the spacing, 
the themes, okay? So if we're looking at um, helping, if a student needs a darker background or a lighter background, um, they also can look for parts of speech. As well as on here, they do have the ability to translate. Um, Board Maker um, is, part, is available on um, Immersive Reader. So there's a great accessibility feature that all students have access to within Pear Deck. All right, so let's play a little bit. So I, now we know some of those accessibility features that you have as you're going along here. Let's try a slide out. So here is a drawing slide um, for you to answer. And feel free to do the best you can. Don't feel that you, we are judging um, your biology knowledge here. But on the drawing slide note, you have a pencil at the bottom where you can draw on the slide itself. You have a highlighter where you could highlight information and you have a straight line as well as text. So if you want to type this out, you can add in text um, to type in the response. And then you have the eraser. I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and play around on this drawing slide. So as I'm getting responses, you'll notice my number is going up from 54 of 91. So I'm having that live data as we're going through this of how many people are responding. All right, so now you have kind of experienced this tool here on the teacher side, that's the drawing tool. You also have the ability to drag. So this is a draggable slide. There are a lot of different icons you can do. Um, one option up here is the flag. So you can drag the flag where it's supposed to go on the screen. And I'm gonna actually time this out. So you only have so much time to answer this question. So I'm gonna select this lock and hold down. Sorry, I'll go back, I went a little too far forward. And I'm gonna give you 30 more seconds to answer this question. So now you have a little bit of time maybe to do some research to find out where this flag needs to go. All right, and you'll notice that it says your teacher has locked the responses for the screen. So as the teacher, you have the ability to lock the screens during a live session, only a live session, only not on a student view or student paste. But once um, this, you want the students to answer in a specific time, kind of helps with timing a little bit, um, and you have that ability to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unlock your screens and we're gonna try another question here. So what question types have you liked so far? What have you liked to do? So this is going to be an adding a text response. So you're gonna go ahead and be able to answer this question on which ones you've liked so far. So I know my favorite is the drawing slide. So we see here again, other people like the dragging and dropping, all of them, I know they're amazing, drawing. Um, dragging and dropping. Um, notice as I'm viewing these responses here in this line that none of your names are showing up. So if you want to see and share what p uh, students are responding to, um, you have that live data there that you can actually present without students having their names shown. All right, awesome, excellent. Um, so let's see what else. Um, numbers, we can ask students what is a number? What is, how many jelly beans do you think are in this jar? I mean, that's a pretty big jar. How many jelly beans do you think are in there? So this one you're gonna answer with a number. So now we're talking about being able to add in math. And as you estimate here, 
you'll notice on my math side here, I'm getting a, a wide variety of responses, but some of, most of them are kind of right around the same spot. Um, so you can see really where those students are thinking on that number slide. So that's pretty cool that you have that ability um, in that range to ask that. We'll try another one. How did you decide that number? So this is a text slide. So now I'm asking for your thinking, asking um, what you, how you came up with that response itself. Okay, so now we're demonstrating our math um, knowledge here. We have some really fast typers in the group. So if you're not able to get in your responses, that's okay. Um, we just really want you to be able to play around with this a little bit and try it out. to follow the guidance from public health officials. One of the first. All right. So one other great thing you can do with Pear Deck is you have the ability to send students to a website directly. So in your student screen here, you can actually um, be in a uh, remote teaching website. So if this was full screen, you'll see as I pulled out a little bit, I have that stay connected with Pear Deck, which I added as a website, right from the um, slide itself. So instead of your students having to open up a second tab, they have the ability to get to it right there. So if you want them to go to their textbook um, or go to a specific spot, you can link that within your slide deck itself. Um, so really great resource there. Um, maybe one of your new favorites along with that drag and drop or drawing slide. Then social emotional health is really um, important right now, right, as we're doing a check-in. So we always want to be checking in and um, Pear Deck has a, a wide range of template resources within their slides um, and that you can use to kind of just check in and see how they're doing. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to, this one is a draggable one, so you can drag the line to how you're feeling. So I am feeling great today, I'm good and I can focus. So I'm feeling great, so I'm going to move that over. And as a group, you can, you can see as a whole how your whole group is feeling. I'm sorry, go back here. There we go. There it goes. So we kind of have a wide range of how we're feeling today. Um, but a lot of you are able to focus and that is great. Um, so really checking in and those, th this is a template right from Paradox. So I didn't make this. This is something that came right from them and I just was able to pop it into my slides. So before we move into these awesome teacher tools, which you are going to love, which one has been your favorite so far? What has been your favorite tool that you are most excited to add into your Google Slides? We got websites and drawing, drawing, absolutely um, all of them, everything. I, I know it's so great that we can use these tools um, with our students. So some really great things. So we are going to um, move into a different format. Um, before I do, I wanna just show that we have the option to see these a little bit differently. So the first one I was looking at was a list layout. So seeing everything in a list, but if you want to view this differently on your screen, you do have the option for a grid view, which will show um, everyone's screen more all at once. And if I was in a full screen here, it would be a little bit easier for you to see. Um, and they also have an overlay, which is every one of the responses on top of each other. For this one, probably not the best option because there's so many different responses. Um, but if you had a smaller group, it would be a little bit more clear on what exactly they were um, answering here. So if you do have the second tab open, 
you can go ahead and you can exit out because we are going to be moving right into WebEx um, where you can follow along with us. I just went ahead and X'd out and opening up this tab a little bit more for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into these teacher tools and what you have access to. So one thing we've been looking at um, down here is this toolbar. And as I am presenting, I do have the option, you've noticed I've been able to click back and forth at this bottom left-hand side between the um, slide deck. I also have the ability to go to a specific slide. So at any point I wanted to move to another slide, I can select this icon and it's gonna pull up my entire slide deck and I can go to a specific slide at any one time. I can also look at my teacher notes. So if I want to see my teacher notes, I can select that option to see exactly what I wanted to say. So these are those notes in Google Slide that you type in that bottom box. Um, we use them a lot just so that we know what we're gonna say, um, but that's where those notes can be found. This green icon in the middle means it's presenting. Um, so if I was not presenting, this would not be green anymore. It would be a different color and that icon would light up. You do have the ability within a Pear Deck session to add a prompt at any time. So when I select this, I get a template gallery here of just some quick responses. So something maybe at the beginning, maybe I'm doing that stress check, or maybe I'm asking in the middle, how are you feeling, are you getting it? So these are quick responses you may have forgotten to put in and you can just quickly add those in. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about these three dots in a minute, but how do we get the students to join? So at the beginning of today's session, we asked you to join, um, go to join PD and sent you a link. So up here at the top right hand side, there is that code and these two arrows. So if I select that, I'll get that join PD link and this is the code I'd give to my students. So you would have them open up that other window and go to join PD and enter the link. Or you can invite them directly to classroom with the invite classroom button. So if you select invite classroom, it's going to load in your classroom. So when I join Pear Deck, I am signed in um, underneath my PGCPS account, and Marianne's going to walk you through that, and that's how it's going to find your classes. And I do have a lot, so it is taking me a minute, um, but I could choose the classroom I wanted to send this to, and it would send them that way. The other option you have is to give them a link. So if you don't want to invite your Google, your classroom, your students from Google Classroom this way, you can actually just add the link into Google Classroom and do that as well. So this is for a live session. We will show you student paste in a second. Um, but if you're doing a live session on Hangouts or Zoom and you wanted to have them follow along with Pear Deck, this is how you would do it. So when you get um, the students a link, it copies the link to your clipboard and you would paste it where you wanted it to go. So like we pasted it in chat here, um, you could paste it in your chat in Hangouts or Zoom, or you could add that link to Google Classroom. If you wanna send it to multiple classes at one time, we pull this back up here. So your clipboard um, is like actually like saved to the computer itself. Um, so you can't really, you'd have to pull it up on the device. Um, but if you, what you want to do is once you've clicked that, you wanna paste it wherever you want it to go automatically. So here I can select just one class to send it to um, within that Google Classroom. But if I did the copy link, and I added it as an assignment in Google Classroom, then you could select the multiple classes you wanted to send it to. The last thing on the screen is to open the teacher dashboard. So this, there's multiple ways to get to this teacher dashboard, but this is one of the ways. Um, this teacher dashboard is amazing. Um, and it's normally something we have opened on another device. So typically when we use Pear Deck, we use two devices. We either use our phone or a tablet and the actual screen that's presenting, um, or we use, um, and we kind of hide this dashboard on our actual presenting um, device itself. But here's that teacher dashboard, and we'll kind of dive into that a little bit. 
So this teacher dashboard is great and I'm going to back up a little bit in the presentation because I want to show you that teacher dashboard with a question. So I am going to go to the dashboard a different way. I'm going to hit these three dots next to the prompt and I'm going to open up that dashboard in a new window. So here it is. All right, so it's going to take me to that slide and I wanted to show you this so that you could see this teacher dashboard and what you get. So this is that list layout. I normally actually use the grid layout. It's my favorite um, so I can see everyone. So you will see your names here for this question. Um, I apologize if you did not want them shown. Just for a sample, um, it shows you how you're feeling today so you can kind of see how your students are doing. Um, and when you like a student's response, you can star them and that will add them to the top if you want to like share this out with your students. Um, you also have three dots here. You can hide the response. So if you don't want that response shown, um, if you display these to the class, you can hide them. Check on live time. And your dashboard actually see what all your students are doing. So you have that power at your fingertips to view exactly what your students are doing live time. So that's really great there. Um, you do have the code here as well in the teacher dashboard. Um, you can see the number of students and open up their roster. So if you're looking to take attendance, um, that is one way um, you can do that is having them join that Pear Deck session and you will have the attendance there. So we looked at these three views late, um, earlier. They are there for you the entire time that you're going through this. So feel free to change that view to whatever um, layout you prefer. Again, grid is my favorite layout just because I like being able to see the screens all in a close, more of a closer view. All right, while I'm on this page, um, you saw when we were presenting that I clicked this option here. So this um, down at the bottom is a screen, right? Um, sort of like a projector, and that allows you to show responses to your students. So if I click that, um, it will take the responses away, but if I select it again, it will allow me to show my students this. So in this view, no student names. Only on the teacher dashboard will you see the student name. You also have the ability to lock those screens. So we did play with that a little bit. I locked your screens and you couldn't do anything. To get the timer, you have to hold this down and you get a 30 second, one minute and three minute timer. So those are some great resources. And then over here on this side are three dots. Now these three dots mean more options and I'm gonna turn it over and our favorite option right now for remote teaching is turning on student pace mode. And what this allows, it allows for your students to work on their own. So we know that all of our students can't be possibly in a session at one time. Student pace may be better for them. So they can really work when they can actually get the work done. So um, now the students can go through. You'll see it's, I'm no longer presenting. It's blue, I'm in student pace mode. Um, as a student, you can flip through and go through this presentation at your own pace and at your own time until you have decided as a teacher to end the session. Um, so that is huge right now for when we cannot have the students at all our live sessions. And when I go to end a session, which I will be doing in a second, um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So remember we went over how to join, um, inviting our students through classroom, turning on that student pace mode when we're not in live sessions, we went over this toolbar and all of these resources are gonna be there for you um, when you leave the session today. We reviewed these three layouts. Grid is my favorite um, to see all of those screens in one time. And then before I show you and end this session, one thing to note is when you are sharing your screen in Zoom or Meet and you're doing Pear Deck, remember to choose new share. So sharing your screen here um, and then in Zoom or in, in Google Meet, down at the bottom, we wanna present our screen. Um, so you're gonna have your Pear Deck pulled up um, inside Zoom when you go to share that screen um, and you'll choose a window or you can choose Chrome tab depending on how you're presenting. Um, if you're using two windows like I have, um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you choose entire screen. 
And then these are our options. So this is a little bit different. So in the classroom, you'll probably have your Pear Deck pulled up on your smart board or your screen or on your projector. And then you'll have it on your device and then your teacher device. And then your students will have it on their one device, right? Um, in remote teaching, it might be best, and it depends on what they can do. Um, if you're in a live session, you might want to have them do those two screens like we did earlier today, where you have the Hangout or Zoom on one side, or the Meet and Zoom on one side, and the um, Pear Deck on the other. So um, using those two screens, so that student view and presentation view. Um, so just a little bit different because we are doing remote teaching. So we went over some joint experiences here, the different slide types and presenter tools, and those three views on the teacher dashboard. We're going to go in to dive into the demo and make sure we're answering your question in chat. Um, I am going to end this Pear Deck session as we flip over and Mary Ann is going to take over presenter. As I end a Pear Deck session, you get an option, so to leave students still working. Um, no, we're not going to leave them still working. I'm going to end this session. And then you get the option to name it. So this is our Pear Deck session. And I can publish takeaways. And what takeaways are, are a, is the, a Google Doc of the entire presentation, your answers to what you said, and the ability to add in notes. So you're going to get an email if you signed into this Pear Deck um, of what those um, takeaways actually look like on your side um, as a student. So I'm going to go ahead and publish those. I'm going to click publish takeaways and then save and end. So at this time, going to return me to Google Slides. I'm going to pass the ball over to Mary Ann and she is going to take over. Thank you so much, Carissa. And um, just in a moment, I'm going to share my screen. Just fixing up my screen here for a moment. Okay, so you've experienced now Pear Deck as a student and you saw from Clarissa's screen how the teacher would see it. Now, how do we get to do that? How do we create this? So, in order to do that, we're going to be talking about adding the add on and creating an account and looking at the teacher tools. The first thing that we do is to go to paradeck.com. That's how we do it. That's how we start it. And I'm going to show you here on my screen at the top. I'm in paradeck.com. And on the top right, you'll see teacher login. We'll go ahead and click on that. Because I'm already signed in, let me sign out so that you can see the difference. When you choose teacher login, you will then choose login with Google going to ask you for which account you are in. It may ask you additional information to make sure, like, do you allow it? And you'll say yes. And here I'm signed into my account. The first thing we're going to take a look at is our Pear Deck settings. So in the Pear Deck settings, you'll see on the top right your email account and your profile um, picture. I use my Bitmoji on here and I click on the little arrow. Here, you'll see an option for my account or sign out. So I'm going to go ahead and click my account. And then first it will tell you your plan. It says your premium. So because of the closures, the school closures, we all have um, premium accounts for free up until um, our closure is over. So everyone has access to the free, um, premium account for free. The next tab next to your plan is settings. In settings, it's important to take a look at this before you even start creating anything in your assignments. 
um, because these are some things that you want to have defaulted on so that it'll be made available for your students. When you join the um, Pear Deck session, sometimes it will ask you in the beginning, um, how do you feel about the lesson? It will give you um, little emojis to give feedback about how you're feeling and your mood um, based on the lesson. So we recommend to keep that on. If you want to skip this completely, you will turn this off. The next part is immersive reader and I highly recommend to keep this on so that you can have students who are um, have or have difficulty reading they can use the immersive reader to help them read and listen to what text you have on there. Um, Clarissa did um, show this to you and if you were in student mode you did see this icon um, where you can um, play around with immersive reader. The other part also to make sure you have on is Google Classroom because we are all using Google Classroom during um, our distance learning, um, this is the best way to connect it with your students and also so that you can invite your students in it. The other part, um, which is a premium feature, but because we all have this um, premium feature for free, is takeaways. So at the end of the session, like Clarissa was showing you, um, you can choose to have um, takeaways sent to your, their, your students, where each student will get an individual Google Doc of the presentation along with their own responses and a box where they can put in their own feedback or comments based on the lesson. And the teachers have access as well. And I'll be showing you what that will look like later on in this session. And then the last thing is require student logins. Because we are a Google um, district, making sure Google is turned on. So these are some important things to take a look at um, in your settings. Again, it's at paradeck.com and you click on the top right and click my account and go to settings. The next thing I'm going to talk about is sessions. So in order for you to access this, you'll see here at the top, you'll see home and sessions. I'm going to go ahead and click sessions. And here, this is where you'll get to see all the sessions that you have um, opened and you get a free um, report on information on every session that you have done. So someone was asking, do you have to keep sending a whole new Google slide every time? No, you don't need to. You could just keep with the same lesson, but you could start a new session every single time. And if you did have a student pace mode, you'll see here, mine says closed. That's because I've ended it. But if you did have it open for student pace mode, it will say open. And you can always go back to the session by clicking on it if it is open. But here I have um, the last time, the date of my sessions, the status of my sessions, the title of the sessions, and every time you um, end a session or start a session, recommend that you name it so that you know um, which class you were working with or what subject or what day. And of course, all those types are slides. And here is the file name of your presentation, Google slide that you've created. Because all of my sessions are closed, um, this is not available, but if they were open and I accidentally close out of my session, I can always go back to classroom view here. Then the next part is where I could see my teacher dashboard, open up, and it will take me back to this exact session. Just like similar to what Clarissa was showing. So I'm going to go back here. But all the information to all your sessions will be made available here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the last thing here is the three dots where you can reopen the session. So if you were working with mod five um, and you wanted to reopen it, um, let your students to go back and access it, you can reopen the session. That's exact session for your students. Um, change the name of the session, archive it, look at the takeaways or export to a spreadsheet. So that's what um, my sessions will look like. So these are my active ones. And then here are my archived ones that I am no longer using. Now, how to make your lesson interactive with the power of Pear Deck. So Pear Deck is also an add-on on Google Slides. Here you'll see when you're in Google Slides in any Google Slide presentation, You'll see um, at the top where it says add on. And to get it for the first time, you do need to click on manage add ons. 
and then you'll search for Pear Deck. So I'm gonna show you here. Here I have a Google Slide presentation. And now you'll notice here I have here, it says Pear Deck, but that is a power up um, that you will need to um, include if you want, if you have any image, any GIFs or videos or animations to make that come alive um, using the power up, you'll have, you need to um, install that. But to get the add-ons, you'll click on add-ons. Mine's already here because I've already installed it, but to find it, you'll go to manage add-ons. And if you don't see it popping up here, you, do, you can search in Pear Deck for Google Slides. And here you can see Pear Deck for Google Slides. And I've already have it installed and you can see here it says install. Instead, you'll see a button where, you, where if you're putting this in for the first time to go ahead and install it. Once you have installed it, um, it will show up here under add-ons and then you'll see here Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. And then you have to open it here. If you do not see this after you have installed it, you may have to refresh or close out of the slide and come back to it so that it will show up. So here, um, I click on add-ons, Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on, open Pear Deck add-on. When I open it, it will open here on the right side of my screen, and that's how I can take whatever I have here and make it interactive. Let me go back here. So we just talked about how to make your list, how to get the add-on. And now, how do we make this magic work? Um, here on the slide that we'll be posting on the, pre on the remote teaching site are directions on how to make your Google slide interactive or how to get some ready-made templates. So I'm going to show here an example that I have. I already have this Google slide that I've already created. I'm doing a lesson on nouns. And again, I do need to open the add-on. I'm gonna give you a walkthrough through this add-on. The very first thing you see at the top is start lesson. This is the button you will need to use in order to start your lesson if when you're ready to go with your students or ready to share it with your students to do student paste. We will hold off on that part for now. Then the next part is our temp template library. Who has time to make everything a scratch? Nobody. So they have this entire library for you of templates that are ready made and you can edit as needed. So here they have um, some lesson builders that you could do in the beginning of a lesson, during a lesson, or end of a lesson. So I'm just going to show one example here. And then here you could see some ready made templates that I can use in the beginning of my lesson. So here is one I like here. I'm going to click on it gonna do its magic and now it turned it created a, it added a slide in my google slides and here it says draw or type two things you already know about today's topic i can go in and click on it and change it to um draw oops my mouse draw two types you already know about harry potter sorry i'm a big harry potter fan so i'm going to be using that in my examples today so here you can edit the text box. Um, you can also change the images, but it's already made for you and it's already made interactive. If you see this bar here at the bottom, that means this slide is made interactive so that when you do start your lesson, students can um, do the activity. So this one is um, students draw anywhere on the slide. This is a drawing slide where it's similar to um, the slide that you did with Clarissa, where you can circle and color using different colors. Or you can click the text box and type in anywhere on this slide. I'm gonna go ahead and back here in my library, template library. These are um, beginning and middle, um, beginning, during and end lessons. But if I scroll down, they even have ready-made templates for learning development, social emotional learning, and then also, um, some uh, templates according to uh, grade level, um, grade level and um, content area. So 
I really like these because we don't have time to start everything from scratch. So I'm just gonna use one here as an example, go to math. And you can see here it says, what mathematical questions could you ask? I'm gonna go ahead and click on this so that it's a lot bigger for everyone to see. And you can see here, um, this is already done where I can change the question to something else or I can replace the image to something that has to do with my math lesson. And it's already ready for students to write their response. You'll see here at the bottom. Or I can also do a multiple choice one. Right here, where hmm, you could put in the question, um, the actual problem, and then you could include answer choices for your students. And then um, the students will see on the side of their screen when they're in it. Um, to choose an answer choice. So again, these are under the template library. I uh, highly recommend for you to um, browse through them and look at the different topics and subject areas um, that will fit your needs. Now, I have shown you some templates, but if you have something that you already created and you're ready to use with your students, there's another way where you can turn this, something like this, interactive. I'm gonna go back here on my add-on. And below template library, you'll see ask students a question. So again, you can see the different types of questions, text, choice, number, website, draw, draggable, and you can also add audio to the slide. So here I created this um, slide here for my students and I want them to match it. They're gonna draw a line to match the singular noun to the plural noun. In order for them to draw a line, they will need to draw. So here I'm on this exact slide. You know, here or slide six, uh, the slide has been selected. And I'm gonna go here on the add-on and click draw. Let me give it a moment. And you'll notice here at the bottom, it has included this bar to let you know that this slide is now interactive. So when you start your lesson with your students, they can draw on this. So make sure you put your directions as well so that they know what to do. So the students, when it's um, your lesson has started, students can um, draw a line on this slide. Another one that I have here is where I want the students um, to identify which words will have an ES or an IES if it's plural. And my direction here is drag a dot over each word. So again, I'm on slide seven. I make sure that is um, selected and I'm going to use a draggable. So I'm gonna go ahead and click draggable. It's gonna work its magic. And it's gonna ask me some information and options that I wanna provide for my students. Automatically defaulted, it will have a red dot. But maybe I could change it to a hard octagon, different shapes different math symbols, different numbers, other kinds of icons, and some additional symbols. For this case, I want to use, use the dot. So I'm gonna go back here and click choose dot, but maybe I don't like the color red. I can go ahead and click on the color and choose a different color. So maybe for this case, I want it to be blue. And notice here, you'll see this showing you what it will look like when the students um, see the slide. I have multiple answers, so I can click, click here and click add another. And notice here, I change it to purple, but maybe I just want it all blue. And I can do another and another and another. The max amount draggable options you can use is five. And you can make them all different colors or all the same color. You'll see here, when the students come onto the slide, they'll see the dots and they can drag them over to the words um, to answer it. So I can go ahead and click update slide. And now you can see this is now interactive and it lets you know that students can drag these five blue dots anywhere on this slide. So I says here, which of the following words will end in ES or, or IES? Now I have five words here, but not all of them are going to end in ES or IES if it's plural. So I purposely put five here so that they can um, choose which words they are 
and move it and move the rest of the side. Or you can actually give them there's only three correct answers and only give them three options. So I just demoed here how to make a slide, a draw slide, and a draggable slide. And depending on the question type, when you click on the question type that you choose here, Care Deck is going to prompt you and ask you some things. And all you have to do is follow the directions step by step to make that slide interactive. So for example, if it's text, it's just going to do the, it's just going to make the option for students to write in text. But if it's multiple choice, it's going to ask them, ask you what the choices are and so on and so forth. So those are um, ways on how you can make, um, use ready-made templates from the template library or to create your own slide and make it interactive yourself. Here again on this presentation, we showed you um, step-by-step -step directions. And now, before I go into the next part, the last, here we go. Um, I do want to include here how to add audio to a slide. So this is, this is just came out, released recently about a week ago, and this is like an amazing tool that you can use, especially with students who are um, low readers, or if you wanted to add more information to um, your slide, you can go ahead and click here, add audio to slide, and you can do it to any slide that you want. And up here, you'll see record or upload audio. If you already did a recording yourself, you can upload it already here, or if you're ready to record now, you can do that here too. So here I'm gonna click record and <clears throat> to give um, some information or read the directions on my slide. So here's, I'll go ahead and click record. Here, you're going to identify the singular nouns and the plural nouns. I'm gonna go ahead and click pause. And then with this, you can pause it um, and then resume again. Or if you think you're ready and done, you can click save. And here you'll see the recorded audio file. I'm gonna go ahead and click play. Here, you're going to identify the singular nouns and the plural nouns. You can press play and pause. And if you decide, you can download the actual audio to your computer if you need to, <laughs> or delete it if you hate it, wanna start all over again, or don't wanna use it at all. If you think it's ready to go, you'll go ahead and click the blue button, add audio to slide. And then you'll see here at the top um, that to let the students know that audio is included. I do know that some teachers, um, when you were looking in the student pace mode, you may have clicked up here at the top. But when you're in um, student view, you'll see a headphone on the bottom right next to immersive reader to listen to it. Um, this is just a link placeholder to let um, Pear Deck know that there is an audio and it needs to be played. So that's how you will um, include audio. Okay, before I go into the last part of our presentation, um, is there any other questions um, that I should go over in regards to creating um, using a template or um, turning your slide into an interactive slide? Either Clarissa or Chris. Um, there is a couple of questions running um, that I'll just kind of take a second quickly to answer. So one is about student audio. The audio abilities only work on the teacher end um, because again, the teacher is the person creating this presentation. So um, students cannot respond audibly. Great feature, but it's not there yet. Um, so that's, excuse me, uh, one of the questions we've gotten. Um, another one I'm getting, oh, resources in general, because there's a lot of people mentioning resources in terms of social media um, and other pieces. We'll discuss and provide you with a lot of those resources at the end. And then just one last question before I jump back. Um, Marianne, there's been some questions, some very specific questions in terms of creating. We'll discuss as many of the features as we can, but we want everyone to remember that this is an optional um, tool, right? It's not required for anyone to use. So you do want to think about your student population 
And then at the same time, if you need any help or more specifics in terms of creating and using the tool, every school has a T3 trainer assigned to them. So you can always reach out to your T3 trainer for specifics and we'll post a link in chat for how to locate your T3 trainer's contact information if you don't already have it. Um, as you were saying that when, when it comes to audio, I saw some um, some of the things just flying on the chat. My screen's really small, so I can't see everything. But right now, because this is a very new feature that really came out just a few days ago, right now, all you could do is a recording as a teacher creating these slides, and it can only be one audio attached to per slide. So that's all that you could do on here. And um, I do see some people were asking about the other choices. So whenever you um, want to turn a slide into any of these choices, when you just click on it, it will work its magic. Um, some of them will automatically make that slide interactive to the way you want. But some other slides may even ask you, just like with the draggable, it asked me, what do I want to make draggable? Well, for choice, Click here, it's going to ask you what the answer choices are. And you can also click add another, add another, or add these options. But for a choice, just to let you know, it's not going to ask you which one is right or which one is wrong. So unfortunately, it's not going to create it for you, but at least um, it will give you information on what the students are responding. This is more as a, a way for you to see it overall how the students are answering or completing it. So unfortunately, it's not gonna grade for you, but you have a report and the data um, once you end your sessions. Same thing for number. And then the website, you're just gonna give a link to your students that will open on the right side of their screen. So you just copy and paste any link and um, it will open on the, in the same window as their um, Pear Deck session without having them go to another window. Okay. So um, because it is of time, I'm just gonna talk about some best practices for instruction. The differences, differences between synchronous instruction and asynchronous um, instruction. We recommend that if you're doing asynchronous, asynchronous Students work at their own pace. So we're not all meeting at the same time. You provide them, you start your session, provide them the link in Google Classroom, and then they can go through the entire um, presentation themselves. Or if you're ready to do your live sessions in either Google Meet or Zoom, you could do a synchronous live session similar to what we did here on WebEx. So um, those are two things to think about. You can help um, your participants set up their screens. Um, students who join your session will also need to have two windows open on their device. If you're doing the live session, just like we asked you to do um, for here when you did WebEx and open another window. So here, one with um, the video platform to see the projector view and one with joinpd.com so you could participate in the Pear Deck lesson. So having two separate windows is really helpful when you're doing live synchronous sessions. And as the instructor, it's also helpful um, to have that teacher dashboard. What Clarissa was showing um, where she had the teacher dashboard and open a new window, but they also have an option where you can open on a separate device. So if you have an iPad or your own cell phone, you can have your dashboard on your phone while you're sharing and presenting on your um, laptop with your students. Also some other best practices for synchronous instruction is tool choice. Think about the tools that you're using. We have so many different tools. Try to stick to one um, so that we're not overwhelming ourselves or our students. Um, be prepared because it is a live session. So many things can ha um, happen. Whenever we set up for our um, trainings here, we make sure our screens are all ready. We turn off all notifications so it's not popping up. Closing any in, um, inappropriate websites or websites that don't relate to what you're gonna be sharing on your screen. Um, think about, again, screen sharing, uh, what is on your screen, and also resizing your windows so that you can see um, as much as possible. And also try to limit um, the distractions, um, allowing, making sure your students are making sure their microphones are muted, um, they unmute it when it's appropriate. So some things to consider. For asynchronous, um, we recommend using student pace mode where the students will see the presentation on their own and able to navigate 
um, from one slide to another. As you saw in Synchronous, Clarissa was able to control what screen you're looking at versus student pace, they only see, um, they get to see what they wanna see and be able to go from one slide to another on their own pace. And some best practices for those and include the expectations, um, let students know, <coughs> excuse me, um, what the expectations are on completing it, maybe explaining to the students ahead of time before um, getting them into Pear Deck, like how it would work, how they would need to respond to it, how they need to complete it, um, set due dates, be mindful, you know, they all are working at different times, so give them enough time to complete it, and um, share ways to get help. And then again, um, student takeaways, you can publish at the end of the session, you can publish takeaways as an easy way to get go back and review the lesson later, and you can even include comments. So here I'm just going to show really quick that when you, because this is all attached to our Google account, Google will automatic, I'm sorry, Pear Deck will make an automatic folder, folder in your drive called Pear Deck, and underneath will call, be called takeaways. And each session that you do will be a separate folder. So here I did a session on Google Forms and all of my students that took the class, they'll get their own individual Google Doc and they could see um, the responses. So I also have a copy for myself and I shared with the individual students. So here's my Google Form, the date that I did the session, the student, and then Part one, they could put in a summary of the lesson and type in themselves. Here's a, the first slide in the presentation and some notes that they can take themselves. And I had here where the students responded with the draggable and you could see what the slide looked like versus what the student's response was and they only see their own response. So um, takeaways is an awesome feature. And also um, some resources. We'll talk about some um, templates. Um, Pear Deck has a wide range of templates that's ready made for you to use and um, change and edit in any way. And again, there's more <laughs> templates that's available on the Pear Deck website. And we have them linked here in the presenta presentation, some help videos and their own ebook. And additional information that they have in regards to remote learning support and it's from Pear Deck, and we also have our own website where we um, house our own information. And lastly, again, thank you everyone for joining us. I know that that was a lot of information, but all of um, the resources will be posted on the remote teaching site, and also a recording of this webinar will be posted um, at some time. And these are uh, our contact information. Um, if you have uh, any additional questions. And again, thank you everyone for joining us.